David Baxter here and welcome to another video. Now there's nothing better than taking some nice crystal clear images or getting a photograph where some elements are just tack sharp in it. And there's a few things that you can do really simple that can quickly improve that in your photographs. However, compared to something like blurring the background in photographs where basically a lot of the work's getting done just by simply winding the aperture, when it comes to sharpness, I found that actually it's not really just one thing that's going to do all the work. It's really actually doing a handful of different things that maybe only make a 5 or 10% difference. When you put them all together, that's what can really transform your images from being quite bloody to being something that's nice and crystal clear throughout. Now with that being said, let's move on to tip number one. So tip number one is always use a tripod whenever you can. Now I've talked about this in other videos of how important it is just to eliminate camera shake in your photographs. And of course, if you want a nice sharp crystal clear image, you've got to eliminate it pretty much all together to achieve that result. And the best way to do that is just get your camera on a tripod. This will keep it nice and steady and stop any sort of camera shake happening. On top of that, there's a couple other things you can do with this where now you actually have it on the tripod itself, instead of actually pressing the shutter release button, which might cause your camera to actually shake when you actually physically press the button itself, it's actually set your camera to the self timer. So set the self timer, press the button, then take your hands off the camera and the tripod altogether and let the camera take the shot without you vibrating it and shaking in any way. Another thing that you can do is you can actually turn off the vibration reduction on your lens. So if your lens has this setting that's usually sort of VR on the side of the lens itself, then have this turned off when you have on a tripod. And the reason for this is that when you're shooting handheld, that vibration reduction setting is great on your lens because it's going to try and stabilise the image when you're, you're holding the camera. However, it doesn't obviously realise that you've got it set in a tripod and what it's going to try and do is it's going to try and stabilise the image in some way. However, because there is no need for it to stabilise the image, it can actually make your images a little bit more bloodier. So the best thing to do is just turn this off when you have a tripod and only use it when you're actually shooting handheld. So tip number Number two is increase the shutter speed as much as possible. So I've talked this in other videos how important it is to have a fast shutter speed to eliminate camera shake if you're actually shooting handheld. Now the rule of thumb is basically that whatever your focal length is, double it for the speed of the shutter. So for example, if you're shooting on a 50 millimeter lens, you need to be shooting at least one one hundredth of a second to actually eliminate any sort of camera shake in your image. What this is obviously going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to shoot those pictures with any sort of blur in there. Now another thing on top of that that's always great to have a faster shutter speed is especially depending on what subject you're shooting, for example if it's something like animals and pets and kids, is because you move around a lot is if you've got a nice fast shutter speed that's really going to help you freeze them in the image rather than any sort of blur in there. Now of course the drawback to increasing the shutter speed is going to be there's going to be less light getting into the image itself so you're going to have to look at what other things you can do to end up making sure your image isn't too dark and that brings me on to tip number three. Tip number three is light your subject as much as possible. So as I spoke about previously, when you increase the shutter speed, this is obviously going to make your image a bit darker. Now, what you might have to do is look into increase the ISO, but the drawback of this, of course, is it's going to make your image a lot grainier. However, if you can light your subject, either just some standard lights or the flash itself, then that's going to allow you to increase the shutter speed, but it's also going to allow you to freeze the subject as well. So for example, if you ever seen water drop photographer, you might think that a lot of that has to do with a really fast shutter speed to kind capture a water droplet just start hitting the surface. However, a lot of the work is actually done from the flash itself. It's the flash going off at the right time to sync with the shutter that's actually freezing the subject. So if you can light your subject anyway or use a speed light or a flash, it's always great to do that and that's really going to help you get some really nice crystal clear tack sharp images. So tip number four is use Photoshop. So there are of course some obvious settings in Photoshop such as your dehaze, your clarity or even adding a bit of texture that will help your images really get that nice bit sharper and crisper and clearer. However though, on top of that, I would also suggest that you don't actually have to sharpen the whole photograph to get the best results. And the great thing to do is actually just sharpen certain elements of an image. So for example, if you're shooting a portrait image or anything like that, then the best thing to do is actually just sharpen up the eyes or the smile of your subject rather than doing the whole thing. And one of the great tools you can use to do this is the sharpen tool in there as well. Now, if you look at this image here, for example, I didn't actually sharpen the whole photograph of the statue. However, I did focus in on the jewel that the statue is holding so that way that makes that element pop and that's where your eye is drawn to when you look at this photograph. So if you follow the previous steps I've talked about and then use Photoshop just to do that final touch and polish up on the photograph, that can really just help you get a nice tack sharp image and that will make all the difference as I say when you put all these together. 
So there it is, there are some quick tips that you can do right away that are gonna instantly help your photographs really stand out, make it a bit sharper, and really get some nice crystal clear images. If you did like this video, please do hit the like button, do hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.